My name is Chantal Thomas. My pronouns are she, her. I am a white settler here in Jaga, known as Montreal. I am currently an intern at Medici doing my stage in counseling psychology. Prior to that, I worked in a number of community organizations, nonprofits across Montreal. So I originally got into nonprofit work and into psychology in general, I'd say, due to a sense of overblown white savior complex. I wanted to help everybody and help save the world. And you know, like here I am with all this knowledge and skills and I can do all these things. Uh, and so I started off by volunteering at the Native Women's Shelter of Montreal and very quickly learned that that was really the wrong approach to take. And I learned a lot of humility there. I learned, um, I, I learned a lot in general there, particularly about indigenous history in Canada. And I am very lucky to have had so many people to have guided me and taken the time and energy to educate me. From there, it became more of a view of allyship and solidarity and what can I do to come alongside someone? What help might they need? Involves me being really helpful about it and asking quite simply, like, do you need me to do dishes? Is, even if that's below my skill set, below what I can do, if that's what's needed, that's what's needed. And if that's what's needed to build trust, then that's what I'm going to have to be doing from I had been volunteering at the Native Women's Shelter for a while, I asked for a job. And so I became a frontline worker there for a couple of years. This was a lot of crisis management. I had the Fordham and night shift, so sometimes it got a little rock and roll. Uh, again, learned a lot about how to stay calm and cool in the middle of anything going on. I also built a lot of really beautiful relationships, people that I carry in my heart to this day. After a few years doing that, I moved into the family care worker role, which involved defending the rights of mothers who had their children in foster care. More Indigenous children in foster care today than there were in residential schools at the height of the residential school system. So I did that for about eight months. It was very, very difficult, but I learned that there's some things that are worth fighting for regardless of how hard it is to fight for them. There are just some things that are true and right and that should be fought for. Uh, unfortunately, due to funding cuts, that position was reduced dramatically. So then I took on a job at the YWCA of Montreal. My job there was to be a resource person for families living in downtown Montreal. So that involved everything from pointing out where resources were, helping people sign up for school and daycare, running parent groups. The majority of it was working with immigrants. And so it was a lot of just education on winter and how do you dress a baby for winter? <laughs> Very basic things like that, but it was still a lot of fun and still really rewarding. Uh, unfortunately, in COVID, that position was also cut. Uh, shortly after that, though, I started my stage, my internship at Medici, doing psychology, doing counseling, which is a long-term goal of mine, and I really enjoy it. So I started working at the Hero Next Door at exactly the same time that I started my internship at Medici. What I really loved about it was the aspect of doing the interviews <laughs> and given the chance to talk to all of my old colleagues and friends from across the years in my community work experience and uh, to showcase all the amazing work that they're doing. I loved working for community organizations and nonprofits over the year. I find the years rather. The reward is so incredibly high in terms of knowing that you are making a difference in the world, no matter how small, is always there, it's always being validated. I am really appreciative for all the opportunities that I have for growth over the years. I have many success stories of people that I've worked with. It's been incredibly exciting. That said, unfortunately, the funding is very precarious. You may think that you have a job and that's set and you're good and then all of a sudden there's a change in government or the private funder decides to pull out or what have you and then you're left, oh well this program I've been running for five years now no longer exists and I don't know what to do. So that has been uh, a big challenge and frustration over the years 
Um, I don't really see a solution to that other than more government support. Uh, so, you know, write your representative bodies and get them to give more money to nonprofits because it's incredibly precarious work and it's hard to plan long term if you don't know if you're going to have a job in the next year. The biggest impact on me over the years has been how much I have learned, particularly when it comes to working with Indigenous peoples. I am just incredibly humble and incredibly grateful to all the elders and teachers that have taken the time to listen to my really ignorant questions and to provide workshops. Not only be there and support me and be kind, so incredibly kind when I've made mistakes and when I have overstepped. This grace that has been extended to me is an incredibly invaluable experience for me and something that I try very, very hard to extend to other people as I go about educating others and passing on um, the information that has been given to me and do my best to strive to be an ally. That's not a term that I bestow upon myself because I think it's something you're always working towards. It's a value, it's, it's unachievable. You're always trying your best. So grateful for the help that I've gotten along the way and I, I hope that I can pass that along to others. Pivoting to counseling psychology, I am really happy to be moving from more of a group focus to an individual focus. It's still really important for me to have a social justice lens and I do hope long term at some point to be able to return to community work, maybe on a more volunteer basis, which wouldn't be so dependent on funding, <laughs> but instead could be me coming in and providing maybe like pro bono counseling sessions or coming back to the roots of what's needed is doing dishes. So I'm going to go and I'm going to do dishes, even though I now have more experience and more qualifications, you know, baking or childcare or whatever small tasks are needed. That's what's needed. And I'm, I'm happy to keep on doing that advice for anyone that is looking to either get into nonprofit professionally or even just as a volunteer business uh, is to come at it with a great amount of humility. Like I said, sometimes it's as simple as doing dishes and it takes a while to build trust and build relationships and that's not something that you get automatically on your first day. For those of you that maybe have a few more means, I would highly recommend donating to your local nonprofit. A little bit goes a really, really long way and as I said with precarious funding, it is incredibly needed. I recommend looking into your local Native Friendship Center in your own city, wherever that might be, or any women's shelters or even homeless shelters that you have around. They're the ones that are always, always in need and often on very precarious funding.